What we doing? Game time. Let's go. You know I didn't come here to lose. Uh. I go hard, I go home. Go hard, go home. You know I didn't come here to lose. Uh. Hello, my friends, we are on the back side of the high school football season. It's week six. Glad you joined us. This is the end zone, a full show packed with tons of highlights and a lot of big games. And we start off tonight in the SEC of South Carolina, Class 4 8, Region 6. Big matchup in the PD, Florence to be exact. The Knights from West looking to bounce back after that tough loss at Kellytown last week. Anytime anybody goes into Hartsville, it's always tough to win there. That's why the Red Foxes are so good at home. They proved that again last week. That's why they're 2-0 and sitting in sole possession of first place entering tonight. As for Myrtle Beach coming off that heartbreaking loss last week to Fort Dorchester, a game they had in hand at halftime, second half issues cost them. But this was about the most important aspect of the season. It's region play. Seahawks wanted to start it with a win. Florence, they wanted to get back into the win column after I said losing to Hartsville last week. How would things transpire at Knight Stadium? We go to Florence, South Carolina, get the action rolling here in the second half. It's 14-7 Myrtle Beach. West driving, but Cam Ward introduces himself to Mr. Terry McKithen for the loss. Fast forward to fourth quarter after a missed field goal, Myrtle Beach. Knights get the ball back, six minutes left in the game, and they are driving. Hudson and company looking for the equalizer. Ball bounces up, but you gotta give credit to the Knights. That is one heck of a grab there, man. Steven Small sideline keeps the drive alive. 133 left in the game. Ball on the 32 yard line. Hudson steps back, scrambles, loses three defenders, and finds McKithen, who does the rest from there. That's why Hudson's so good. He's just an all around talent. McKithen is as well, and the drive stays alive. Last play of the game 11 seconds on the clock. Knights on the 10. Hudson goes for the quarterback keeper but he is stuffed. That seals the win for Myrtle Beach as the Seahawks hang tough to beat West Florence tonight, 14 to seven. It was as expected. Seahawks go to two and zero in region. Knights fall for the second consecutive week to one and two. Still, a lot of football left to go. Four more weeks before we get into the postseason. So, how does next week look? Well, on paper, it looks pretty darn good because you've got Hartsville and Myrtle Beach set to collide next Friday in the ABC 15 end zone Friday Night Rivals game of the week. It's the television game of the week on CW21. If they can win that one, or whomever wins that one, I should say, will be in the driver's seat to win this region and have home field advantage throughout the playoffs, which start a month from tonight. As for West Florence, right now, they have a bye unless they want to try to find a game, but they're going to lick their wounds, so to speak, and try to get back into the win column when they get back into region play here in a couple of weeks. But tonight, it was all about the Seahawks. Caught up with Mickey, get his thoughts on this game and moving forward. What a great job by our defense there at the end. A great goal line stand. You know, my hat's off to West Forest. They played a great football game tonight. Uh, just, uh, you know, this region's so tough. Anytime you go on the, on the road in this region and get a win, it's huge. And, uh, you know, this is the SEC of, uh, of South Carolina high school football. So it's just, it's just a tough region. And, you know, you got to strap it on every week and be ready to go. And, of course, you know, you always want to. All right, that takes us uh, to South Florence in Darlington. Now, remember, going into this game, 
The Bruins suffered a major setback last week with the loss of Lenora Sellers as we go to the nest. And there is Lenoris on the sidelines after having minor surgery last week. He is listed as week to week. Get things going here with the Darlington on the move. Quincy Rhodes filling in for Lenoris, gets the touchdown there. And that was the start of a big evening for the team in white. Malik Terry and his offense going back to work. The big fella cutting through that Falcons defense picks up a nice chunk of real estate to keep the drive alive. Moments later, Johnson in zone. Another touchdown for the Bruins. Debray having himself a nice season. Sellers watching, and he's going to like this. Terry, big push, gets down inside the one. They're looking to give him a touchdown, but not going to happen, so they give it to the big man across the middle. That is a touchdown, and that was a lot tonight. A lot of touchdowns tonight. South Florence goes on to roll over Darlington, 76 to nothing. What the Bruins' offense has done this season is, is rather remarkable. Um, they're just putting up huge numbers, and tonight was no difference. As they run their record of 5-1, and one. more importantly than that, they are 2-0. and oh. So South Florence, Hartsville, and Myrtle Beach are all tied at the top of Class 4A Region 6. And all three have yet to play each other. It's going to be a wild ride over the next couple of weeks to determine who will be the region champ. But as of right now, those three are in prime position to make the postseason when it begins at the end of October. South Florence back on the road next week to take on Wilson, who we'll get to in just a second. Darlington will head to the beach next week to take on Matt Rio and North Myrtle Beach in Little River. And that takes us to Wilson and North Myrtle Beach. Those two meeting tonight in Little River. A big game for both of these teams in their quest to punch their ticket to the postseason. Chiefs without Elijah Vereen, out with an ankle injury. There he is. He's listed as day-to-day. -day. Defense came up big. All's under T.J. Cox. Yeah, records the sack. Man is a beast. I don't know why you want to do that to that young man, T.J. Nevertheless, though, that puts the Chiefs in an offensive position. Cam Freeman, Dart, Trace Hall, end zone. North Myrtle Beach on the board, up 7 to nothing. Chiefs go back on the defensive. Freeman, this time on the keeper on fourth and goal, extends that lead to 14. The offense was hitting tonight for Matt Real and his football team. We move to the second. Freeman, the all zoner with another dime, and talk about pin placement. Chris Webb with a diving touchdown, 21 0 team in yellow. She's putting on a display. And for good measure, after a turnover, hooks delivers one more time for North Myrtle Beach. This one all Chiefs. They roll 41 to 7. Your final in Little River. Big big win for North Myrtle Beach and their quest to return to the postseason as they record their first region win of the season. They get a game above 500 improving to 3 and 2 with Darlington coming to town next week. As for the Tigers, they drop to 1 and 4, 1 and 2 in region. So they're still in the playoff hunts, but they're going to have to win some ball games down the stretch against some pretty quality football teams to get themselves back into the postseason. And it starts next week with the Bruins at Tiger Stadium. We go to Class 5A. Conway, fresh off their win over Carolina Forest, going to the tank to take on St. James, who has been absolutely phenomenal this year. Coming off that loss to Sumter, but a lot of teams lose to Sumter because they're a really good football team themselves, but outside of that, St. James hasn't lost to anybody on their schedule. We pick it up third quarter with the Sharks leading 12 to nothing. But the Tigers get back into it. It's Huggy Bear. Rodney Huggins in for the score. Dude is putting on a display over the last couple of weeks. 12 to 6 Sharks. Devin Granger showing off the range. Cameron Alston in stride. Roll into the end zone. Conway battling back from down 12. 
They take a 13-12 lead with 8.34 left on the clock. St. James gets the ball back. They're looking to take the lead. Fans are fired up. Daniel with a chance, and the big D is up, and it is good. Yeah, that's the way you do it. The St. James defense rose to the occasion late. Number uh, 18 is the hero, and St. James goes on to win this one 15-13 to as the Sharks improve to 3-1 and one on the season, 2-1 and one in region as of right now. And you got to give hats off to Tommy Norwood and his staff and his football team down in Merrill's Inlet. They are playing phenomenal football. Coach Norwood said it was just a matter of time before his football team would start realizing that they could win football games. Well, they're doing that right now. And the more wins they piled up, the more they get confidence. And right now, they're looking mighty good. As I mentioned, the only loss on their schedule was to eighth-ranked Sumter. And that was a battle last week. Good thing for the Sharks, they get an opportunity to face them again because now we reset, so to speak, going down the home stretch in this region. So moving forward, the games that are going to be played from now until the end of the season will count in terms of what happens in region play. So as we reset, Conway will be home next week to take on Carolina Forest. Tigers beat the Panthers last week. St. James, they head to Sakasti. And St. James beat the Braves in dramatic fashion a couple of weeks ago. So the battle of 707 is back on. Carolina Force and Conway will renew. And whoever wins down the stretch is going to end up reaching the playoffs and winning the region championship. And that takes us to the ABC 15 end zone game of the week. And it's a battle of Class A state champs, or excuse me, state ranked teams. State champs, if you're looking at Lakeview, Hannah Pamplico wanting to join that list, hoping this would be the year that they would bring home the hardware. Right now, both of these teams ranked Lakeview on a five-game winning streak. Raiders playing well. Their only blemish was to Ainer, who also happened to beat Lakeview at the beginning of the season. How would these two uh, transpire tonight as we go uh, to Hannah, South Carolina? We pick up the action here with Hannah Pamplico up 26-12. Raiders looking for more. Floyd Eady sikes out the camera guy. Dives in for the touchdown. HP extends their lead up 32 to 12. Gators though battle back. Bellman muscles his way in for a score. And the Wild Gators aren't going away. Not quite yet. 32-18 HP. Marvin Gordon. Well, he drops back. Michael McDaniel, fancy footwork. That right there dances in the end zone as Poston finds his receiver and McDaniel is in. Another HP touchdown, 38 to 18. Middle of the fourth quarter, Bellman forces his way in the end zone yet again. That would pull the game within 38 to 32, but it's not gonna happen. Hannah Pamplico pulls it off. They win over Lakeview. First time they've beaten the Wild Gators in three years as we go to the scoreboard. And it was the Raiders winning a huge region game as they take the inside track as of right now to win this region with this big hurdle over the Wild Gators. Wild, Wild, Wild Gators, I'll get that out, who is the staple in this region and has been for quite some time. We'll see what happens as these two move forward. But man, huge win for Jamie Johnson and his football team. As you saw, a happy group of Raiders there because they know what this means, this win means for them. We caught up with Jamie after this one to get his thoughts. It was swing for swing. You know, we knew they would be, they're a great football team. Uh, we thought we matched up well with them though. Um, so early on, it was swing for swing, blow for blow. Um, and it really took them, you know, we got the turnover. Uh, forced a turnover there on the kickoff, and really that kind of broke it open for the half. Um, you know, we know that their offense, if we can limit number two and number three, uh, we know that we can kind of take away some of their big plays, so that's all we tried to do. Well, we talked about kind of, you know, when you have two great football teams going at each other, to keep striking the stone. Eventually, they'll, it'll break. Uh, just keep hitting it, keep hitting it, keep hitting it. And we knew that if we kept positive and kept hitting the stone, then we knew that we'd come out on victory, you know, with a victory tonight. So. I got faith in number one, our quarterback, and number five. Um, you know, we felt like we could match up 
throwing the football against them a little bit and, you know, you know, standing out on defense, you know, Jamarcus uh, Williams, he's a freshman, but he played on number two all night long and, and did a great job. Um, so, you know, we, we think he's going to be a heck of a ball player later. Well, Jamie said it right there. Xander Poston was on fire tonight. Sellers had a fantastic game as well. The Raiders are going to be a tough out for anybody they face moving forward. And I think they clearly sent a signal to the rest of that region tonight uh, that they are the team to beat right now simply because of the win tonight over a very quality football team that, as I mentioned, is the staple in that region. And if you beat Lakeview, you're in prime position to win that region and have a home field advantage. And Jamie Johnson feels like he's got a football team that can make it to Columbia this year. And that's a big win for him and his program. All right, when we come back, we're going to switch gears. We're going to talk about Ainer and Waccamaw. Those two met in a region clash down in Polly's. More scores and more highlights as week six of the end zone rolls on in just a few minutes. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the end zone, brought to you by Conway Medical Center and Mr. Sparky. All right, my friends, let's switch gears and talk about Class 3A. We're going to start off with Ainer and Waccamaw. The Blue Jackets looking to bounce back after that tough loss last week to Dillon. As for Waccamaw, playing well as of late, heading home to take on the Blue Jackets. Hoping to string together back-to-back -back wins. With that, we go to Polly's and let's find out exactly how this thing went down tonight. These two squaring off. Early on, Ahmad Gerald introduces himself to that walk -em all defense with a thong. Eight nothing, the team in white, and Gerald just continues to show his dominance. Warriors having their issues here. The exchange. Goes to the team in white. CJ Raven comes up with it. Good job, big fella, number 90. That leads to this. Daniel Stanley continuing to impress. Young man down the sideline. Oh, he's gone. Yep, he's fast. And Ainer's back in the win column. Blue Jackets handle business tonight. 54-34. Picking up their first re region win of the season as they improve to three and one. This drops the Warriors to one and two. So, Waccamaw still in the hunt for a playoff berth, depending on how things go down the stretch. As for the Blue Jackets, three and one, and they're sitting right there in prime position to put themselves in that second spot, having already had that setback to Dillon. We'll see what happens next week when Georgetown goes to Aner to take on the Blue Jackets. As for Waccamaw, we'll see what happens with them as they move forward in the season. And we'll have more on the Warriors next week as we turn the page and get ready for more football, which would be week seven. All right, big game between two story programs. A lot of state championships between these two programs. Dylan and Lamar, second ranked in 3A. Lamar, third ranked in 1A. We pick up the action here with the Wildcats leading, but Silver Fox is not going away. Dolford runs out of the pockets. Patrick Anderson having another stellar night and another stellar season. That would put the Silver Foxes on the board, but. Dylan had already stretched this one out, and they continue to do it. Jack Greider pushes himself in. The quarterback, yep, steps around, gets another touchdown there. Dylan tacks on some more as Chad just says, hey, can our defense stop these guys? And the answer to that is not so much. Wildcats do what they do, and they put on a display. They hang 47 on Lamar tonight beating the Silver Foxes 47-8 to eight as Dillon runs their record to 3-0 and oh overall. Obviously, this is in a region game, a non-region game. And you got to give hats off to Chad Wilkes, who said he, he called uh, Coach Rowan and said, hey, let's play. I needed a game. You need a game. Let's play. Hats off. Uh, you know, Lamar knew what they were getting into. Still played 
Got to give it to them. This is only going to make them better when they get back into region play next week when they head to Louisville. As for Dillon, they're going to go back home to Memorial and prepare themselves for Waccamaw, who will make the trek up to Dillon next week as these teams resume region and their march toward region championships. And that takes us to another big ball game. That would be Lada and Marion. Both of these teams perfect in region play heading into tonight. Marion perfect on the season and ranked among uh, some of the best in their classification. They were looking to remain that way and take themselves and put themselves in the driver's seat to win another region championship, but they had to go on the road and beat the Vikings who were also in the same boat. Brandon Eisman and company welcoming uh, Brian Hennessy and uh, the Swamp Foxes. Here come the Vikings. Kentrell Townsend handoff to Mr. Jones around the right side, slowed down enough before he's finally brought out of bounds. That would lead to this. Jones again up the middle, makes a few tackles, misses, and then he finds the end zone. Vikings on the board. They take an early 7-0 lead. Second quarter, Marion. They went back to work. Drayton Davis, quarterback keeper, up the middle, finds some running room down to the 10-yard line. Swamp Fox is in position. A couple plays later, Davis out of the pocket. Malik Nichols, right side, end zone. Lada led this one 7-6 at the half, but Marion would get it done in the second half as the Swamp Foxes remain perfect. They win this one 12-7, a hard-fought battle between two good football teams. That 1-4 record doesn't indicate how good the Vikings are. They played some tough competition, and every game they played has been relatively like this. The score has been really close. They just haven't quite got over the hump. Swamp Foxes, on the other hand, have been dominant this year. They're right back where they were last year. Remember last year they ended the season in the state championship game. They're hoping to return there this season, but win the thing. And right now they are in prime position to do that, especially being that they're in all likelihood going to win this region already 3-0 with a couple of games to go. So hats off to them. Speaking of Marion, where they're going to be home next week to take on Bowens in the Tobacco Bowl. And that's always a fun and entertaining uh, event for those folks in Marion and Mullins. We'll see how that one pans out next week. As for Lada, they're going to go on the road and take on Andrews, which is always a tough place to play. We'll see if the Vikings can bounce back and see what they do down in Andrews against the quality opponents in uh, the Yellow Jackets. All right, that takes us to Marlboro County and Lake City. Both these teams in dire need of a region win if they want to put themselves in the conversation to reach the postseason. Lake City actually looking for their first win of the season after dropping the first two. We go out there, start the game here with the Panthers coming on the field, fired up and ready to go, but it's Mr. Bird. Taimon finding Elijah Shamers. Can't be stopped. 85, the junior in the house. Marlboro County up 7 0. Enter the first, though. Check out the special teams. Jamarion Franklin, the East Carolina commit with the block. Burgess picks it up. Touchdown, Lake City. And they're going to go for two to take the lead. Alston finds enough running room to find the house. Lake City was up 8 to 7 at the end of the first quarter. But after that, the Bulldogs would get it done and leave Lake City with the win. Your final tonight from Lake City. Marlboro County 19, Lake City 14. Panthers still looking for that first win. Bulldogs record the first region win of the season, which puts them back at one and two with a huge game on the horizon. If Marlboro County can go home next week and knock off the Bulldogs from Camden, that would put them in prime position to reach the playoffs yet again. If they lose, they're going to be in a little bit, uh, a, a little, little bit of hurt. So that's a big game for that football team next week. Next week is huge for Lake City. They got to beat Manning if they expect to have any opportunity to reach the postseason this year. So big games for both of those teams. 
as we switch to Region 7, or excuse me, to Week 7 of the high school football season next week. So, all right. We are going to take another quick break. When we come back, we're going to tell you about Mullins, and we have plenty of scores to get to. And later on in the show, Skiza highlights two of the best in the state. They collided in Darlington. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the end zone. Brought to you by Conway Medical Center and Mr. Sparky. All right. Well, it hasn't necessarily been the year that Mullins was expecting. They were hoping at this point to have a couple of wins under their belt. Unfortunately, it hadn't been the case, but it's still relatively young in terms of the region schedule. Still a lot of football left to go. And this football team could get themselves back into the conversation for the postseason. But they had to win tonight against Kings Tree, who was coming off a win over Andrews last week. So with that, we go back to the PD and we go to Mullins, South Carolina. And we get things going here with Mullins up 20 to nothing, looking for some more. Livingston, ball. Man, talk about scrambling and finding your receiver. That right there would add to the uh, auctioneer's lead as they took a 26 to nothing lead over the Jags. We move fourth quarter, and the Ox looking for some more. Nazel Robinson, the keeper, run out of bounds, but he picks up some more real estates, and that sets up this. Livingston with another touchdown for the team in red. And the auctioneers get it done tonight. They pick up their first win. They shut out King Street. Your final 32 to nothing. So Mullins has some mojo heading into that big game next week against Marion for the Tobacco Bowl. We'll see what happens as the Ops go to one and two in region as they travel up the road to Fox Field to take on Marion next week. Other scores from tonight. Zocasty actually was only trailing this game 14 to 10 in the fourth quarter. Sumter would score late to pull away. The Braves were right there in the mix till the very ends. But they're going to regroup and turn their page because now everything resets as they prepare for their second meeting against St. James in the Battle of 707. Loris picks up a huge win as they pick up their second region win in a row. They're now 2-1 and, and right in the thick of things after a 28-3 win on the road at Georgetown. The struggle bus is real in the Steel City as the Bulldogs remain winless in 2021. They'll look to change that next week when they go to Aner, which will be a tough challenge. As for Loris, we'll see what the Lions can do moving forward. Sherall, nice win over Buford on the road, 31-15, as the Braves pick up a region win, and they go to 3-2. and two. Next week, though, they go to Pageland to take on Central. Other scores from tonight, it was Andrews dropping their second straight after losing to Kings Tree last week. They lose at home tonight to Lee Central as they drop to 1-2. and two. They got Latta coming to town, and I'd be hard-pressed to believe that this football team will be ranked Next week, when the rankings come out on Tuesday, they enter the Knights, the 10th ranked team in the state, but they fall to 1-2 and two with the Vikings coming to town next Friday. And finally, Green Sea Floyds is quietly making some noise. They put together three straights to improve to 3-1 and one after a win over Johnsonville tonight. It's a big region win for them. It gets them on the board. It drops the flashes to 0-2. And right now, Johnsonville, you know, they're going to have to uh, pick up some real big wins down the stretch if they want to make the playoffs. But right now, uh, Green C, you know, they still have yet to play uh, some of those monsters. HP, they haven't played them. They haven't played Lakeview yet. So there is an opportunity for Green C uh, down the stretch when they play those two teams to see whether or not they can win the region championship or not. So we're going to find out right now. They're scheduled to go to Timminsville, but the World Wrens have had all kinds of issues with COVID this year. So not sure if that game is going to get played or not. But as of right now, that's what's on the schedule. So 
And we'll see Johnsonville. They're off next week. Jamie Johnson and HP were trying to play them next week, but um, that didn't uh, didn't wasn't worked out. Couldn't get worked out. So Johnsonville will take the week off, and Green C will head to Timmonsville. All right. When we come back, two of the best in the Squeeza ranks met tonight in Darlington. Trinity Collegiate taking on Hammonds. Those highlights next. Welcome back to the end zone. Brought to you by Conway Medical Center and Mr. Sparky. All right, Trinity Collegiate, perfect on the season. Hoping to stay that way tonight, but to do so, they had to beat the number one team in the state in Hammond, who also happened to be undefeated. This was a battle between one and two in Darlington. And whatever the outcome tonight wouldn't really matter because for some reason I got a feeling that these two teams are going to meet in their... Uh, quest to win a state championship, but we'll see how tonight went. Nevertheless, and we go to Darlington in South Carolina. Here come the Titans ready to go. And this was a defensive battle, man, early on. Both teams swarming to the football here. The sack by the visiting team kept the Titans corralled. But with 22 seconds left the first quarter, yeah, the Titans get the revenge. Spencer Scott with the sack. He'll record that one. Later in the second quarter, Reggion Bennett's the Buffalo commits, flies through, and he'll get the sack. Dude doing it on both sides of the ball. Fans are loving every minute of this, and they should. You know, this one was scoreless at the half, and the second half would prove to be Hammond's football game as they would score twice in the second frame to beat the Titans tonight, handing Trinity Collegiate their first loss of the season. But, as I alluded to, this isn't a region game, so it has no bearing on who's going to win the region. And as I alluded to also, there's a good chance that these two football teams will meet in November on their way to Columbia. So, this was just round one. We'll see what happens in round two in about a month or so. As for the Titans, they'll go back to region play next week as they head to Columbia. It's when it matters. Got to win those region games because you want home field advantage and you want that region championship. Other scores from around the area in the Skiza ranks private school. Florence Christian, they go out of the private school ranks and they beat a public school. So big win for the Eagles as they improve to five and two. But for them, it's all about getting back into region play and getting that goose egg off the scoreboard there in their quest to reach the postseason. They'll get that opportunity when they head to Heathwood Hall. That game is scheduled for Thursday. It's a Thursday night game, so I'll let you know what happens next Thursday. Other scores from around the area. Williamsburg Academy knocks off PD Academy, handing the Eagles their first loss of the season, 35-14. Eagles now drop to 1-1 one one in region as Williamsburg, well, they take the lead in the race for that region championship. PD Academy back home next week in Mullins as they welcome Spartanburg Christian to town. We'll have highlights of that one for you as the Eagles will look to bounce back. As for Dylan Christian, their struggles continue as the Warriors remain Winless in region play, losing to Lee Academy 36 to nothing. And it doesn't get much easier for Christian Wolf and this football team because next week they welcome Williamsburg, who just knocked off PD Academy. That'd be a big win, though, if the Warriors can knock them off. We're going to find out, though, this time next week if, in fact, that does take place. We're going to switch gears and talk about North Carolina Fairmont at home tonight, just right across the border from South Carolina. Could the Golden Tornadoes win for the first time this season? We'll let you know. And what about Lumberton? Could they also win for the first time? Scores coming up next. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the end zone. Brought to you by Conway Medical Center and Mr. Sparky.
The Gold Tornadoes home tonight looking to capture their first win of the season. Talked to a local coach here in South Carolina who's familiar with this football team and said a lot of really good things about the direction this team was going. It was just a matter of time before they finally would put it together. Could tonight be that night against East Bladen? And we take you out to Fairmont. So the Golden Tornado looking to get that first dub. But it doesn't quite start off the way they want to. Zach Mears recovers the rock. And that young man is going to rumble 94 the other direction. East Bladen would tack on a two-point conversion. Not the start Fairmont wanted as they found themselves down 8 nothing, But they would finally get on the board. Cam Sweat looking for a little run room and a little passing as well. 15 yards to Joe Poe. John Poe, that is. That cuts the lead to 8-6. to six. Cheerleaders having fun. Rooting on their football team. After a late whistle, Derek Baker strips the ball. Baker doing it again on the next play. This time returns it 40 yards for the touchdown. Two-point conversion is good as well. Fairmont would take a 14-8 lead at the half, and they would go on to win this one. 20-8. You saw the excitement. Gold Tornadoes are on the board. They pick up their first win of the season, and it's a big one. It's a region win, so now, well, for them, it's a conference win. So they go to one and two in conference play with a little momentum. We'll see if they can continue that next week with South Stokes as they go on the road to take on that football team. As for Lumberton, well, it's just hadn't been a very good season for the Pirates. They get shut out again, 49 to nothing to Southview. That drops them to 0-5 on the season. And they go back on the road next week. Grays Creek is the destination. We'll see if week seven is the, is the week that the Pirates finally put themselves in the win column. We're going to talk a little college football briefly when we come back before we close out the show and prepare for week seven. I can't believe it's already week seven almost. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the end zone. Brought to you by Conway Medical Center and Mr. Sparky. The 16th ranked Shauna Clears at home again tomorrow to wrap up a two game homestand. UL Monroe is on the Grand Strand as we speak. They're the opponent for Coastal Carolina tomorrow. It's a 2.30 kickoff. The shot's perfect on the season, but tomorrow's a big one. It's the conference opener for this football team. After tomorrow, shot's on the road as they head to Arkansas State to take on that football team. That game is next Thursday. That starts a three-week stretch where the Shawna Clares play three in a row during the middle of the week. But we're going to have scores for you and post-game reaction tomorrow at 11 as the shots look to remain perfect. As for Clemson, they're in dire need of a win. They're at home tomorrow to take on Boston College, who hasn't lost this season. The Eagles are 4-0, so we'll see how that one plays out in Death Valley. And another team that needs a win is South Carolina. They step out of conference to take on Troy. That game is tomorrow night at williams Bryce. So plenty of high school for you tonight, and we switch gears and talk about college tomorrow. Thanks for joining us this week for Week 6. We'll be back next Friday for Week 7 as we inch closer to reaching championships in the postseason. Yeah, the weather is starting to cool down, and it's getting closer to November, even though we just now reached October. It'll be here before you know it. Thanks for joining us tonight. We appreciate you watching. Have a fantastic weekend. I'll see you tomorrow night at 11.